Chapter 2, Supply and Demand. You're going to learn this chapter with a lot of drawing. So let's get into it. To understand supply and demand, we have to use this graph with x-axis representing the number of units produced and y-axis represents the dollar amount. So let's start with the demand. How can you plot a demand? Demand is basically, let's say you are plotting the demand of uh, pizzas. You will have more demand of pizzas when the cost is lower, right? So as the cost is lower, the cost is going lower here, the demand increases. So as, as you have cheaper and cheaper pizzas, more and more people will, will buy it. So that is a typical demand curve. People will buy more number of units, let's say this is uh, 30 units, let's say this is 20 units, 10 units. So more units, more people will be able to buy when your price goes down from let's say $30, $20 to $10, right? So for $10, you might have 30 people buying. For $20, you might have like let's say something around 15 people buying. And for $30, you may have maybe only 10 people buying, right? So the demand curve looks like this. It increases with lower prices. So this is an important curve, the demand curve, right? The supply curve is the curve of the producers. Remember we looked at in the last video, there's the consumers wanting to consume more and producers who want to you know, build more things, uh, produce more things but it takes more money to produce more things. So typically, the supply curve looks like this, right? If you want to produce 30 items, it takes more, more money versus if you want to produce 10 items. So demand goes, demand goes high with more units for lower price, supply goes up, uh, the cost goes up for supply if you want to create more units. This takes more money. So the supply curve goes like this, the demand curve goes like this. So this is the basics of supply curve and demand curve. And where they meet, this point, where the supply and demand meet, this is the point called the equilibrium or the market clearing price. At this point, let's say this is $25, 25 units, at let's say $12, this is the market clearing price, this is the optimal price. Optimal in what sense? Optimal in the sense that, hey, the number of units that are demanded in demand for this price is the most cost effective at this point. So this is market clearing price. So in a competitive market, which we will assume for the rest of this chapter, there will be an optimal price, optimal market clearing price. So we learned about the demand curve. We learned about the supply curve. And we learned where the need is the market clearing price. Now let's say this demand curve was that of butter, right? Meaning 25 units of butter for $12. And now let's say the raw material cost of butter goes up. Let's say milk is the raw material for butter. And then let's say milk becomes expensive. What happens then? With the demand curve and supply curve, what would happen? The price would shift somewhere here, right? The price would be somewhere here. The raw materials would say, hey, um, it's gonna get more expensive. So what will happen is the supply curve will shift up. So now I'm gonna remove this and redraw this. So now we're gonna see what happens when price of certain raw material goes up to the supply and demand, right? So let's, let's redraw that. Keep the units as is. So now let's say this was originally, this is what it was, right? Let me draw this again. So now let's say if this was $25. 25 units and this was 
fifteen dollars let's say now let's say the this is supply this is demand now let's say the cost of raw material and let's say this is for butter now let's say the cost of raw material milk went up so what will happen this curve will move up right because it's going to take more money and so what will happen is it will intersect here now meaning the demand was for 25 units now the demand is much lower let's say 15 units so for a higher price let's say this is uh, 19 dollars so as we saw when when it moved up from 15 dollars to 19 dollars the units went down from 25 units to 15 units because the supply curve shifted up price went up what do you think will happen to the demand do you think this 20 this 10 10 units of butter not sold will will not be sold or what will happen people typically find substitutes if they can't buy butter at that price they'll probably go and find uh, a substitute let's say margarine right so these are substitutes so this pent up demand right which is not met because only 15 units are being able to sold to be sold because only 15 people can consume let's say the demand curve stays like this then that means only 15 units are going to be cleared others people can't afford it so when price goes up units goes down for butter but when this happens to butter similar graph for margarine will happen cost of margarine will also go up because they are substitutes people will start going and buying margarine and so what will happen is the demand for margarine will go up and when the demand for margarine goes up let's say like this its cost will also move up let's say this is a new demand so for substitutes like butter and margarine, they move hand in hand because pent up demand not met here for some arbitrage, if it's cheaper, it'll go to the substitute products. But there are these things called complements like automobile and gasoline. If you were to replace this with automobile and gasoline, they are not substitute, they are complements. So for complements, the price of one when it goes up the other price goes down for example when when the price of gasoline goes up the automobile sales typically goes down at least in the short run so then when there is an inverse relationship we call them complements but when you can substitute each other one for the other then they they go hand in hand so we learned about the demand curve we learned about the supply curve we learned what happens when the raw material goes price goes up the supply curve shifts up um, and the demand let's say also goes up then eventually the new price is much much higher so that was an interesting concept right as to how we can plot a demand how we can plot a supply how when what changes what is the dynamic so we covered some parts of this clearing price surplus and shortages how would we draw surplus and shortages so if if we take this example i'll redraw some parts of this so let's say this is our demand curve and this is our supply curve this is the number of units and this is the price so if price goes from let's say ten dollars ten dollars here to let's say it goes up to fifteen dollars If the price goes up here then we see that 
and let's say here it was able to sell 20 units now it will only be able to sell 10 units so if the demand is lower than the supply then we have a surplus right this is a surplus because they are trying to sell at a higher price this is ten dollars this is fifteen dollars similarly if price goes down to let's say five dollars but the demand is for let's say now 30 units but it can only sell five units let's say it can only create five so then this one is the shortage right this 25 units is a shortage and here we see this is the surplus right so which is 10 minus whatever this curve is let's say this was 10 and 30 and this is 20 units of surplus so basically surpluses and shortages are built up let's say the government says hey you cannot sell this gasoline or whatever this product for $15 but you got to sell it at $5 then what happens is shortages get built up because the demand is exceeding the supply. So it's very important to know the dynamic. This could be used also for, let's say there is a war in the Middle East, which you know controls a lot, part, a lot of oil. And so let's say they control 20% of the oil. And so if you were to predict what will happen to, let's say, oil consumption in the U.S., or the oil prices in the US when there is, let's say, instability or war. When that happens, you can easily, with back of the envelope calculation, figure out, if you, if you know the supply curve and the demand curve, what will be the impact? How much shortage would it be? Or how much price, how, how, how high the price would go for those uh, commodities? So with basic understanding of demand curve, supply curve, shortages and surpluses, understanding whether something is a substitute which goes hand in hand with price action, or if it's a complement, which is complementary, it's very important to, to be able to graph all of this. So we covered surplus and shortages. Similarly, now let's take a real life example of cost of education in the United States. We will draw the same supply and demand. So now let's take this example of supply and demand for graphing out cost of education in the United States. So if I were to say this is the money spent on education and this is the number of students enrolled, right? And so now let's say we're going to compare 2000. So let's say this was the demand in 2000. And let's say this was the supply in 2000. So what has happened is uh, the cost has gone up for education, right? We have seen that it takes more money to to have uh, to pay for higher salaries for professors to uh, build new campuses that are much more has much more facilities and to give all of those uh, things that the students want. The cost has gone up. So what has happened is that the supply curve has shifted up, right? What used to maybe call you know cost let's say $20,000 and it used to, let's say, support uh, 10 million people. What has happened is the curve has gone up because the price has gone up. So the new supply curve looks like this of 20, 2020, let's say 20 years from now. And what has also happened is more students are trying to enroll. So the demand curve has gone up as well, right? More students. So the supply curve went up, demand curve went up. So let's say this is demand 2020. So see what happened. More students and the cost goes up even more. So let's say this is $40,000, right? Almost 2x. But basically, we saw how this point equilibrium would have, would have gone to this point 
if there was the same demand meaning if there was the same demand if there was the same um if the cost has gone up from from here to here then it would have been able to serve less number of students let's say this was only 5 million but what we also saw is that the demand has gone up so the demand went up supply also went up and so it got even more expensive so this would have been probably around $30,000 or fewer but if it has to now serve more than 10 million let's say this is 12 million then and the price goes up even more so we we could see how the demand curve shifted more students want education we also saw how supply curve shifted up it's becoming more and more expensive to 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 build new colleges with new properties much more expensive and so the overall cost goes up even more and so this this is an interesting concept right to understand how these two variables move the supply and demand and there is this thing called elasticity and to understand the elasticity of supply and demand we will again we draw this it's a very important concept and in this what happened is we saw for for college education example above right the price went up and the quantity demanded also went up right this one is a perfectly elastic right both goes up so now let's 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 try to draw elasticity so if i were to draw so let's say this is price and quantity let's say if the graph look like this meaning for a given quantity there will always be a demand no matter what the price this is inelastic what would be an example of this insulin right hypothetically people will pay any price because if they if they want to live then they they would pay there will be a fixed quantity and then there will be ask for it no matter the price $10 $20 is a rough example this graph here versus this graph here you see the area here is so much bigger versus the area here is so much smaller so this is this is perfectly inelastic this is inelastic this is elastic meaning let's say if the price if the price goes up um people will move from one product to another product so that is elastic and similarly the opposite of this one is perfectly elastic right so for a given price people will buy the quantity but for any other price they'll just stop moving let's say you you have uh, burritos for $2 but then if you start selling for $3 people will just substitute to buy something totally different so perfectly inelastic slightly inelastic but as the graph goes as as the as the slope becomes uh, lower and lower then it becomes elastic and then it becomes perfectly elastic so elasticity is basically uh percentage change of the quantity change in quantity depending on percentage change in price so for a given percentage change in price what is the change in quantity here there is no change zero right quantity doesn't change no matter the price here it will be less than 1 here it will be closer to 1 and here it will be infinite change in quantity is like infinite it just goes up here also the change in quantity is much higher than here and you can see the change in quantity by looking at the area under the curve from the previous point of price differences right okay? so we look 